27, 2004, and this is the beginning of an interview with Raymond Ayon at the office of Congressman David Dreyer, located in Glendora, California. Mr. Ayon is 76 years old, having been born on January 14, 1929. And then uh, on a Sunday, the war broke out in Korea. A couple of days later, I found myself on a C-47 transport plane, and we had no idea where we were going. We landed in an airstrip, uh, a place called Suwon, and the battle was nearby us. When we had debarked, debarked the plane, we could hear cannon fire, artillery going off nearby. And we were loading uh, wounded casualties. And what struck me the most was pine boxes. They had numerous pine boxes. None of this uh, fancy metal casket type thing. Apparently they uh, hired Korean carpenters to bang out a whole bunch of wooden caskets of pine. And I recall the wood smelling green still, pitch coming out of the boxes. Blood oozing out mixed with the pitch. And we loaded a whole bunch on the ship. Wounded coming in aboard ship. I know how difficult it is. These are painful memories. That's all right. It's okay. You're a brave man. You're a brave man. That was my first sight of war. That's guys, horrendous. Guys without arms, legs. That's where I learned to give up. More pink shots. If we turn off the video for just a minute, then we can start it again, if you want. I was around 19, 20 year old, you know, some 18, just kids, really. And these kids have been, I knew some of the Army guys, not on that plane, but maybe they were there, but they were all smudged with uh, uh, gunpowder and smelling of gunpowder and... Uh, um, uh, it was a horrific situation there, with a bunch of caskets, blood oozing out their sides, and all these wounded and injured people. And uh, the one kid had no arms and bandaged up. And did you sense that these were North Koreans, or did you sense they were Chinese that were doing the attacking. Oh, it was the North Koreans right away. Because we interviewed one fellow who said that when he was in the jungles in Korea that he would run across the, the Chinese with the red stars on the caps. There's no jungles in Korea. There were no jungles. Was that Vietnam? Vietnam. No. Oh, well. Anyway, the, they, were being supplied by the they had said that this was going to be a police action. Right. That, that it could be done, uh, the war would be in in a big hurry. They um, says, oh, go do your job. We'll, we'll bring all the bodies back and all the wounded and stuff. And uh, then they, from police action, 
it turned into a complex, then the Korean uh, incident or something, something minor, but in time it would turn into a whole lot more. Anyway, the uh, when it was uh, at the beginning, when it was uh, the uh, police action, they said, "Well, we'll bring all the bodies back to Japan and uh, at the uh, hospital in Fukuoka." They would lay them out in the courtyard there, and uh, I didn't tell you about the body parts. And it's true that sometimes they would make up a body by getting different parts. And it was gory, gruesome, bloody mess. How about the mash units in Korea? I mean, I, I uh, eventually wound up with a mash unit. Uh -huh. The army needed a lab tape, so they sent for me. And I got stuck with them for months at a time, and years. I was in Korea so long that I saw the four seasons. The winter time is cold, deadly cold. And uh, us guys from sunny Southern California weren't used to this stuff. And not only that, we we weren't prepared clothing-wise towards the elements. We so had didn't outfit you with combat boots like uh, the combat boots have a little strap, and uh, even my folks at home sent me some heavy sweatshirts to wear underneath to try to keep warm. But that's one different story. I wrote down in my memoirs as the uh, how deadly napalm is. You've heard of napalm? Oh, sure. Okay, that, that burns forever. So they sent us out on a detail to pick up firewood. And the armies ahead of us had already cleaned out the area of firewood. So we were out there in no man's land looking for firewood, <laughs> of all things. Well, t uh, tell me about the, the napalm and collecting the firewood. Okay, uh, one of our guys, we could find no firewood. So he says, let's go to the strip and rip off a drum of napalm. He'd seen it done before. So we had um, a tent. We had a drum, a uh, gasoline fuel drum. Anyway, we, we made a stove out of it, and by experimenting how much material to put in there, the napalm, it would light up. And sometimes it would stay for hours and hours burning. So that was a perfect uh, heat source. As we were shivering, we were cold. And you get in situations where it's sub-zero cold. How about the fumes? It smells so. Uh, well, there was a vent. We'd, uh, in order to get the heat, we, we didn't, rem I don't remember the smoke or stuff like that. Anyway, it was a good source of fire or fuel. Keep us warm from freezing. So this type of thing went on and on. And I, I made several trips with the uh, caskets, pine wood caskets. And uh, I'll never forget the load of caskets I had in Japan to take to the morgue or hospital. The, uh, the caskets were behind me, about six high, and uh, there's a sign that says, uh, stop in case of low-flying aircraft. And I wasn't paying too much attention, and here comes a plane to land, and I slammed on my brakes, and here comes a casket. And that casket might have gotten me right in the neck if it hadn't been for the back of the seat. Oh, my goodness. It, it slammed into the seat and put me against a steering wheel. So 
that was a close one, but I had to push back and push that casket back where it belonged, being more careful next time or trips crossing runways. When uh, you were with the MASH unit, and of course we all know that the TV series MASH lasted mm -hmm. three times longer than the war did, well, um, was it like that? In cases, yes. Like, uh, my commanders in the MASH unit were uh, an Australian. Now remember, this was a United Nations war. I know. And we had troopers from all different parts of the world. My commander was uh, named a Cater. Commander Cater, an old, old veteran soldier <clears throat> who might get to know real well. He carried a gun with him all the time, a red gun. Um, then, after having left Commander Cater behind, we were going up to uh, another place. And this time, they uh, recruited a civilian. I wrote about him last night. A civilian, I don't know, remember his name. They, they made a captain out of him in charge of us. He was a missionary's son who had a leprosarium in Tegu, right in the middle of town. A uh, leprosarium being a leper colony? Leper colony. He gave us, our commander, uh, the captain, gave us a tour of the place. That's, that's a place to stay away from, a leprosarium. Anyway, at Tegu, I, uh, I uh, had experience of uh, taking care of uh, enemy POWs. We would uh, give them a bath with hoses, delouse them. I remember this, I don't know if it was North Korean or Chinaman, that had a big wound in his face, in his eyes. And the poor guy was peeling out maggots out of his eyes. Anyway, we treated him as best we could and then gave him inoculation of um, something, I don't recall what it was. But when we saw me coming with that needle, they were scared terribly. They were frightened at my Syringes, and uh, well, they probably had never seen them. Yeah, well, we we, we gave them the treatment, treated all their wounds, and sent them on their way. So this story goes on and on, two years, off and on. Uh, the Pusan perimeter okay. is when the North Koreans almost right, right. shoved us into the ocean. Right. And we were a, had very little real estate there in Korea at that time. In fact, our squadron was sent back to Japan. How did people feel about MacArthur? I got a glimpse of MacArthur. Oh, uh, was that enough? Yeah, <laughs> in one of the uh, crossings of the Han River, which is the main river separating Seoul from the South, mm -hmm. there's a Han River. All bridges were down. And uh, we were waiting in line to cross a pontoon bridge. And here comes a motorcycle and a lot of horns and sirens and like make way, make way. And here comes a staff car with the flags, three stars. I mean, four stars. I don't know how many stars MacArthur had. Five stars. And the guy says, oh, there's old Jim MacArthur. And they gave him the throughway. As he went past, I, I do remember seeing his corn cob pipe. Huh? Naturally, all the young guys, all the soldiers, everybody was waving and whistling and cheering, but uh, he didn't pay no attention to us. <laughs> MacArthur. 